We've been uh, seeing over the past uh, four or five years that a tried and true aspect of our SCAB management models, the, the things that forecast what the risk of SCAB is going to be, uh, we've seen problems and the, they're not working as well as they, they used to. Um, one of the issues the, that really pops out is the model that talks about ascospore maturity. Now this was the model that says, okay, if we consider that ascospores are mature at green tip and we keep track of the temperature, we can keep track of how development of that inoculum is going and do a good estimate of when the end of primary scab season is. And that was developed in New Hampshire uh, in the early 80s uh, and it worked pretty well in New Hampshire in the early 80s and it's worked in a lot of places where the climate is similar to New Hampshire, most of the eastern United States for example, uh, to give a good estimate of when uh, the end of scab season will come. Um, and unfortunately uh, about 2012 we saw that uh, there was an exceptionally dry year um, during primary scab season and the whole uh, period of scab development was drawn out so that instead of ending at around uh, first cover, second cover as it usually does, uh, it went well into third or fourth cover, so about one, two, three weeks longer. And we saw that scenario repeat in, in two of the last three years as well. And it's apparent that dry weather periods are not uh, accounted for well enough in our ascospore models and that we need to do something to change that or at least be aware that the, when there's a dry year they may not be functioning that well. I think that uh, there, an attempt was made uh, by uh, Stensvund, a guy, a researcher in Norway, to uh, put an accounting of these dry periods into the model, uh, but it still has not worked very well. So in the future, we're going to need to either make some adjustments or uh, not pay as much attention to it. Uh, as they say, uh, don't drive your car into the water just because Google Maps tell you to do it.